It's almost time to play. Café. Ah, Larry Lee's in the house. Marion, welcome. Anna Mae Reyes, thanks everybody. Thanks for tagging it and sharing, uh, sharing it. Mike, Mary too, a beautiful woman is here. Mawelna. It's hump day here in the Philippines. I think it's Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday evening for the rest of the world. Welcome, welcome to Dan and Minnie's Journey. We're live from the basement studio located in the heart of Bye Bye City Lane. Just a few steps from the Dunkin' Donuts. A few steps and a jeepney ride, I should say. <laughs> Of course, none of that is true. <laughs> oh, but you know how I can be. <laughs> but if you got them, smoke them. <laughs> we have Rider Adventure. Chanzel. Michelle Ann is here. Thank you for coming. We're up to seven warm bodies watching. Mel is in the background. Mel Calipayan. Bakio Mertz. Hey, good morning. How did you manage to get up so early? <laughs> Dan's here, pushing the button, pulling the levers, trying to get everything ready. I woke up late this morning. It was a mad dash to the news. It was a mad dash to YouTube to catch on, catch up with what's going on. And But I made it. I made it. With the help of Man Mini. ABCM channel is here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. We're up to 10 souls in the room. <laughs> All right, let's get this show underway. All right, so today, oh, let me disconnect this, this speaker here. Hey, today we're going to be talking about the 12, oops, I mean 10 universal laws of nature. <laughs> hey, but I just wanted to warn everybody in advance, you know, that I won't be bringing it up, I won't be bringing up the panel uh, in the first end, I'm going to, I'm going to, it's because I always lose track of what I'm saying. You know, when we, when we have a focused, um, we have a focused live stream like this. And so I'm going to, Larice is in the house. Larice, the Philippines, most eligible bachelorette and a mighty fine person, social light extraordinaire who everybody in Manila knows because <laughs> she's there often <laughs> enjoying her life attending uh meetups with other youtubers and hopefully she'll be with me in june I, i'm getting closer to the actual date um 
Larice, I'll be emailing you later. And then we got Irene and Irish is in the house. Wow, it's hot. It's not only hot here in Bye Bye City Lady, but it is super hot. I mean, it is like living in the depths of hell. And so I have never experienced anything like it. You know, you add the heat to the humidity and you got something that I have never experienced before. So, <laughs> all right, so let's get started. What are we talking about today? Oh, yeah, yeah. Wait, before we get started, I know. I know I always forget to talk about this. Somebody today is going to win this 100 peso bill. I don't know how I'm going to send that. Uh through the mail, but we'll figure it out. And then also we're going to, what else is going on? What else is going on today? Uh, oh, oh, the big, the big contest where somebody's going to walk away with, <laughs> Mike, you're so funny. The depths of hell, that's Florida. Yeah, no doubt. That's the way it's become anyway. <laughs> you speak about the wild west, you know, that's the wild east right there. That's the southeast. <laughs> it's very wild down there. Mm. Nicole is here. Hi, Nicole. Nice to see you. Oh, my goodness. Uh, wait, let's see. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So, yes, it's hot. Uh, I want to talk about the big contest. So, the big contest is somebody's going to win $100 bills. That's 5K plus. Oh, what's the rate this morning? Who's got the rate? It's been floating around. It's making me nervous. If you look at the if you look at the rate graph, it is heading north really, really quickly. So a lot of people are talking about a dollar crash, but I actually see the opposite. You know, armchair uh, financial wizard Dan here is seeing a dollar rally. I'm not seeing a crash of the dollar. I'm seeing uh, pain and suffering continuing on for the second half of 2023. Take it or leave it. I hope it doesn't happen. I hope it doesn't happen. But why? Let's talk about it for a moment. How will it relate? What will happen in the Philippines in, in terms of the economy? Well, the economy is strong here in the Philippines. We didn't overbuild here. Nobody overbuilt in the Philippines. We're keeping up with demand. That's one thing. And we're being insulated by the spending of dollars by the USA. So the USA came in here and of course they're setting up military bases. They're setting up all the things they need, clinics and uh, hospitals, and uh, they're setting up latrines and they're setting up, uh, did I say that right? Mini Snow is here. Hi, Mini Snow. They're setting up everything that they need in order to, in order to support the troops that are gonna be stationed here temporarily in the Philippines, temporarily. And of course, that means they're bringing in millions of dollars. So that millions of dollars translates into the purchasing of material goods, the hiring of Filipinos to build. And also, and also uh, it should bring in quite a few jobs into the Philippines. So, I mean, when, when that happens, you're going to continue to see inflation. But the other side of the story is um, they're going to well, they say share the bases, but my, my friends are telling me that are on the bases. There's a lot of stuff going on. And so what we're going to be doing is sharing is caring, right, Mike? <laughs> They're sharing the bases. <laughs> They're also dumping and spending money like there's no tomorrow. But anyway, that's okay, Mike, because we're going to be visiting all those places if, I, if we get a chance. Uh, I've talked about this a little bit that we're going to be, we're going to be visiting. And so we're, whatever... You know, we're going to be visiting as many venues or areas around the bases as we can to see how it's affecting their local economies. And as a matter of fact, we start the journey tonight, tonight, man, Minnie and I, we decide that we'll leave tonight on the big ship. It's either the Isabella or the, it's the Lapu Lapu. I'm not sure which one is in, in, uh, in port right now, but whatever ship that is, we'll be taking it out of here tonight. I know I'd said in a previous live stream that I'd be taking the the uh, the fast ferry from now on, but I see how I changed my mind. I changed my mind so quickly, you know. But I decided that uh, I don't want to take the bus to Ormolk and then have to, you know, uh, 
find that ticket, get there early Thursday morning. And then I real I realized the main reason that I didn't like to take the fast uh, the uh, the big boat, the big ship, as opposed to the fast ferry is because of what time it arrives in Cebu. It arrives early in the morning, depending on how the seas go, you know, uh, determines the time it comes into port. And it usually gets there very, very early in the morning. And because it does, that means you got nowhere to go. You got to go stay on the ship until you, until daylight. And then you got to roam around Cebu until you until your uh, hotel allows you to check in. But now we have the apartment in Cebu. All we have to do is go straight from Pier One when it when the ship comes in, and we just and speaking of ships, the Voyager family is here. Uh, Voyage, get it, ship Voyage. Anyway, uh, where do I get it? Anyway, <laughs> we're taking the voyage of a lifetime. We all are. <laughs> And we hope, we pray for a happy ending. Anyway, the whole thing is, is that we're gonna um, we're gonna head straight to the apartment, which is not close by Pier One, by the way. But it's so early in the morning that we probably won't spend a lot of waiting time in traffic. So it'd be very reasonable, most likely, to get from Pier One to La Hougue or the JY Mall, where our apartment is located. So I'm kind of looking forward to this trip. I want to try it out. Now, what I'm not looking for, uh, what I'm not looking forward to, Des is in the house. Mingye, welcome. Welcome, welcome, Michelle Ann. I think I may have already said hello and welcome to you. Jeanzel is here. Um, Jean Gat. And uh, welcome, welcome. Like I said, uh, we just go open the door, right? We just go to our apartment, Lahu, go open the door and we hang out there uh, until, you know, we decide what we're going to do for that day. Probably I'll take a nap because that's the one thing I can't get used to is those little teeny tiny um, cots that they have when you, when you, when you do, when you sleep on one of the decks. So I may switch it up. I don't know. We're going to head over to uh, the ticket office after the live stream. And then we will, we will see uh, if they have any available, I don't know. Air conditioned rooms. Daniel, what is going on? Daniel, what's happening? I've been thinking about you lately. Thank you for stopping by and saying hello. I hope all is going well for you. Leonard Lund is in the house. Uh, Leonard, thank you so much for being here. I'll fire everybody up on the, on the, uh, on the panel. As soon as I get through my useless diatribe. All right. So now, uh, Daniel's here saying hi to everybody. Hey, so here, here's the whole thing. Now, here's the here's the whole thing. Ah, we're gonna get over there, and we're we're prepping for an adventure because we have a lot of stuff to do. We got to get ready to head north to Manila. I don't know what that's gonna look like. I don't know where we're staying yet. But the objective of this trip north, of course, is to see what's going on around all those areas that are impacted by U.S. military presence. That's the main objective. And to me, and to me, Loris. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> now if you're in the Manila area, you'd like to hook up. Send us a, send us a, a you know. Sends an instant message, sends a, a, a PM through Messenger, and then I'll, I'm usually pretty quick to respond. So let us know. Let us know what's going on. We're most likely going to be hanging around. Uh, I haven't decided where we're going to stay yet because I, I, I promised Larice, I don't want Larice to be stressed about getting there and then going back and then be, being uh, so tired and all that. So we're going to make sure Larice is well taken care of while we're there. I want Larissa at least to stay over one night, quite possibly two. And right now I'm thinking, I'm thinking the Bayview Hotel looks pretty good. So uh Larry's in the green room, but we're not gonna bring him up just yet. We're gonna we're gonna talk some more. But Larry in the green room, I don't know if you notice if you look around, I have cookies. I got a few Dunkin' Donuts there, about a, about there's some there's a nice selection of Dunkin' Donuts. 
and then help yourself to the coffee, the coffee bar. <laughs> Do me a favor, though, Larry, leave the alcoholic beverages alone. OK, those are exclusively for the talent. <laughs> All right. So anyway. All right, I was going to talk about the big contest, right? The big contest is, the big contest is, is, you know, the $100 bill. But since I can't, it's hard to send the $100 bill through Gcash. Then what I'm going to be doing is I'm converting that over to Philippine pesos. And whatever that $100 bill has in value with the conversion is what you will receive in Philippine peso. So where, where is the exchange rate? Like I said, I indicated earlier that it's going, it's going crazy again. So let's see what's happening. Philippine peso is at 56.18. Holy moly. Let me show you now as Tim, Tim, I don't see Tim in the, in the, in the stream, but I don't know if you could see this or not. Now you can't see it. I lost it anyway. I lost it anyway because I hit I hit the I hit the wrong button. But anyway, if you if you could see this, it's showing. No, I can't. Yeah, it's a mess. I can't see that. You can't see the graph. I got to learn how to use properly. Uh, learn how to use Streamyard so that I could bring all this information to you in a window on the screen. But basically, it's showing the fifty six eighteen. Now, when I did my video, when I did my. Uh, my peso video on April 19th or thereabouts, it was, it was at 5631. So the last few days it's been fluctuating just like a roller coaster ride. And EMC is here been going down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Right. So, but if where it stops, you know, when the music stops, if it's at 5618, then you will win. If you're chosen as a winner in the wheel of fortune that Pacquiao Mertz is setting up, um, then you'll be getting 5,618 pesos, if I'm not mistaken. All right. So that's a, that's, you know, that's, that'll probably pay an electric bill or two. You know, that might be, that might buy you a few groceries. And I just decided to do that for simplicity's sake. I hate complicated giveaways. I hate complicated contests. And especially when I actually have to work. Uh, and actually do something, you know, I'm, I'm pretty lazy. And uh, Pacquiao Mertz volunteered. Of course, she's being compensated for this. I'm a, I'm a generous guy. Remember, everybody's, everybody's talking about it all over the internet. Girly Senna's here. Alfie, what's it all about? Thanks for coming to the live. So, I mean, uh, I'm glad you're all here. Des, I'm glad you're here and I hope you win. So how you win is you show up here, you can have, you can have, you can use your primary channel name and two of your secondary names, right? Two of your ninja channels, if you will, but you cannot switch between devices and we'll know because we have ESP. We'll know if you're switching between devices. So we're keeping a, a close eye on that. If you're switching between devices, your channel name, we're going to find it. We're going to detect it. And then we'll eliminate that entry. So for each, that means you have three chances, three entries per live stream. You have your primary name, a ninja name, and a third channel name. As long as you're, as long as you have three gadgets in play, we don't care what kind of gadgets they are. They could be three cell phones. They could be a computer. They could be a, they could be a, a, a desktop computer, a laptop computer, and your cell phone. You could have three cell phones in play. You could have one cell phone and one notepad and one computer in play. We don't really care. Irene and Iris is in the house. Listen, thanks all 19 million people here in the stream, because I got to tell you that I have a blast doing these, you know, except that, except as you can tell, I got a little nervous on the last live stream. Sir Luke is in the house. Maybe the, may the force be with you, Sir Luke. Sir Luke, also a very, very, generous with his time and sir luke is very generous in general all right so uh i really appreciate everybody everybody here uh 18 million people in the house we hope that that grows 
mini snow this one's for you right here all right so let's talk about i got this idea of doing the 12 laws of nature from a article that i read in the sun so this comes from the sun i know what you're thinking it's the sun <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but i want to talk about these and so i'm laying them out there and then once i lay lay them out there then we're going to have a panel discussion about this and you know it's appropriate i mean if the panel is true is if it stays true to their uh to their beliefs then they'll they'll open it up and they'll talk about politics the existence of god <laughs> and all that stuff it's okay to go there right they'll talk about transvestites and homosexuals and all kinds of things <laughs> by the way i've never met a homosexual that i never liked i i think i mentioned that on the last live stream and by the say by the way if you say homo is that a derogatory term somebody correct me on that all right so anyway i try and stay away from all the controversial stuff as you guys have you you guys have probably figured out and so uh if we start if we start sliding backwards then don't take it personal if i mute you <laughs> But I, I won't kick you off the panel. That's the thing. You know, I've been known to kick people off the panel on other li on, on my own live stream. But I've done it once or twice. But here's the thing. I'm not going to do that. You know, I, I just may silence you so that you could have a moment of reflection. <laughs> and then we'll move forward. And also, if you're in the if you're in the comment section, I see something that that I don't like. It is my live stream, right? <laughs> and so if I don't like it, I may silence you and I may silence you forever. So we'll have to see. But generally speaking, everybody is very kind in, in the comment section and on the lives. So anyway, that's where it's, that's where it's going to go. I see a few smiles on the panel uh, member faces. But anyway, we've got uh, Lazy Larry and Leonard are in the green room. Help yourself to some Dunkin' Donuts and some cookies, Leonard. They're there. And also, uh, I set up a coffee bar for you guys. But don't touch the alcoholic beverages because those bottles of booze are for the talent. And that would be me. So you leave the bottles of booze alone. That's for the talent. And, and Parador is there. I've got Filipino rum and a few other tasty things. Jason is here. Jason, a mighty fine human being. Thank you, Jason, for coming. All right, so this is from a Sun article, and I want to give you the I want to give you the date, but I can't. But the credit goes to the Getty uh, Museum, and it basically is talking about. You can Google this, and you'll find it. What are the twelve universal laws, and where did they come from? And I don't want to bore you with the whole history, but there are twelve, and I just want to deliver this message. Uh, because why is it, why it interests me is because I put some of these laws in play and it works for me just fine. And so, uh, the disclaimer here is that all things that are presented in the live stream by Dan are for entertainment value only. And they're for purely, purely for the purpose of getting cheap and easy views on YouTube. <laughs> so. Do not practice or put them in play. And just because I might suggest that I practice or put these in play and they work for me, I'm not suggesting to you that you put these in play. No harm was done to any animals, any, any human beings or any creatures that roam this planet or swim in the sea. No harm has been done. <laughs> as a result of delivering this information or putting together this live stream, which took me all of about five minutes. So that's the value. So the disclaimer is don't listen to anything that Dan has to say and definitely do not put it into play. But Dan does, Dan does. That's the only point I was trying to make. So let's go over them. And if you have, if you can search for it, you could play along too. 
It's a Sun article that appeared in there, but I can't give you the date uh, because I I simply don't know it because you know how things get passed along on social media and on the internet. You know, oftentimes they don't follow the rules and they don't credit properly. Uh, they don't give proper credit to the sun. And so, but it is the sun. It's the U.S. sun that loves to do articles like this. Who's divorced? Who was caught in bed with who? And all this other stuff. No, it's not like, it's not exactly like the National Enquirer. The National Enquirer just lays it out there, you know. <laughs> the sun is a tiny bit different. So let's talk about the 12 ways to apply the universal laws. Or let's talk about what they are. Okay, the first one I'd like to, like to talk about is the law of vibration. You're in constant motion that can inform your, it can inform your lived experience. This means that if you are manifesting a certain lifestyle, you have to adjust yourself to the desired level. You can apply the law of vibration by participating in mindful practices that promote good vibes. That kind of is very non-specific, you know. So let's say let's say that I give away, uh, I give away this hundred peso bill today, which I'm which I'm planning on doing, Sir Luke. So one of the one of the pitfalls is you don't know if you're helping somebody uh, by doing this, or if you're harming them. How can you be harming them? You know, let's say that they use the bill for for bad, for evil instead of good. But my true intention when I send that 100, that 100 peso bill out is that I have the good intention, thus creating the good vibration, right? Okay, and that's, that's how that works. And so it could be used for good or for evil, but my intent is for good. And so it's whatever my intent is to spread good vibes around the planet. It's you and me. Lenny Me is in the house. Good morning. Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate that. You know that. Really appreciate you. Jay Lynn is here. Thank you so much, Jay Lynn. All right. The law of attraction is the next one I want to talk about. Law of attraction is the most common one. It's the one, it's the one that is most uh, known. It's the most popular of the bunch. It's used for manifestation. You basically attract what you focus on. You apply the law of attraction by believing what you're manifesting. Yeah. And so every move, let's say, so I'm always talking about being rich is better than being poor, but I really don't know that. I don't know that as a fact. You know, I don't know how it plays into the law of nature, but I personally, Dan, would rather be rich than poor. So I live myself, whenever I'm doing something or I'm making a move, right? I'm making a move like uh, putting something out there. It's what it's the idea that I'm trying to manifest prosperity and wealth. So what so what I'm doing basically is if I if I give this away, you know, I'm gonna use this as an example again. If I give that away, then that means that I have no fear that I will not receive another one. I will not see receive another 100 peso bill. Are you following what I'm saying? So fear, in my mind's eye, you know, uh, the opposite of the law of attraction would be to take this bill and put it in my pocket and then hold on to it as I, as long as I possibly can can hold on to it. So just because I have figured out that if I give this away, then I have put out there in the universe, I've put this in circulation. And so for... All I could say is, as part of the way it works for me, is that once I put this in circulation, then I am guaranteeing my, myself to get it back at some point, to get it returned back to me. And it could be in, in a lot of different forms. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the form of money, not monetarily. I put it out there as money with great intention, but sometimes it comes back to me in other ways of, of uh, it manifests itself in other ways that impact my good fortune, but not necessarily directly in the form of money. 
But just recently, though, it returns back to me in the form of money. So I just said a whole bunch of stuff, right? I just said a whole bunch of stuff. But basically, it can come back to you in the form of goodwill, uh, subscribers that are like thinkers that all of a sudden they find my channel, they subscribe. And so my, Mike says, I'd rather be happy than rich because people who are rich want want more and being happy doesn't cost money. Okay, well, I like both. I like being happy and rich. And so I am both because I manifested the, uh, both of them. So really no other thoughts, Mike, enter into my mind other be, other than being happy and rich. <laughs> and so I am both happy and rich. I don't know if that makes any sense or not. In other words, I'm, I'm very rarely unhappy. <laughs> I'm more happy and rich at the same time. Yeah. And I think people, people around me, they see that in me and I don't know how they can feel it. I don't know how that part works. Maybe it's one of the laws of nature. Okay. But let's talk about the next one. Uh, the law of one of oneness. Everything is connected. It is the first and most foundational law of the universe. This is activated when compassion is exercised and the fact that we are all one is accepted. So I would like to share with you, and I shared it before on this live stream. Thank you for, for hanging in there, uh, Jason. Thank you for the 21 million people that are in the house right now. I truly appreciate it. So I want to I want to talk about how I realized that we were that we were all connected to each other, how it happened for for me. So I take I'm in, I'm in college and and I'm in my fourth year. I'm in my senior year. And my grad school court, my coordinator comes to me and says, oh, you're missing a class. You know, what am I missing? Well, you're missing you're missing any philosophy class. It could be any philosophy class. Right. The only one that was open at the time that I could take was uh, a, a class in Chinese philosophy. So I go, I sign up for the class. It's packed. I almost did not, did, did not uh, get in, but I go in my very first day, I'm waiting for a spot. I'm in the back of the class. I'm actually standing up and the professor who appropriately is named uh, Dr. Long, <laughs> which means dragon in Chinese. Interestingly enough, he wasn't Chinese. He was American, but he, he was, he was presenting philosophy, Chinese philosophy in a way that pissed off everybody around him, all his colleagues. But it just so happened that he was a tenured professor who was also the de department chair. So, you know, I'm getting nervous. Because he's saying, you know, I don't know, I, I don't know if uh, add-ons are going to be happening. Because look how packed this uh, this room is. But he points to me, he says, "Don't worry, Dan. Just keep monitoring the class, and by the third class, I'll make my decision." So, uh, Doctor Long was a very, very interesting guy, right? Because he's talking about all these things that I talk about, you know, as part of, as part of my philosophy of life. And then he, and then he, uh, he says to me after class, he says to me, he says, Dan, come on over here. Right. And so I go over him. How do you know my name? Oh, we had to sign in. We had to sign in and, and we had to put a waiting list together. And so he was paying attention and he says, Dan, I already know you're going to get in. And so I go, well, how do you know that? He says, because you're special. <laughs> so he says in a way, he says, he says, I realize that you're in your infancy stage and understanding how the whole world works. But uh, you're going to you're going to end up getting you're going to end up getting a seat in the class. So relax. Don't worry about it. I just wanted to make sure that you knew. And so how would he I mean. I don't get it. I wasn't understanding what he's talking about. You're special and all this other stuff, right? All right. So uh, I relax and I, and he said, wait till class three, I'll give you your add on slip and all will be right in the world. Well, it's, as it turns out about four or five or six people left the class after the first, after the first meeting. 
by the second class, we already know that, you know, the people waiting had already known that, that they had earned a spot. I was in regardless, right? But I felt good that, you know, that I, I didn't have, to, I wasn't causing anyone, any harm to anyone who needed the class as much as I did in order, in or, you know, in order to graduate. So basically, you know, he basically by the end of it, we did end up waiting because he said he was going to wait till the third class meeting. He gave everybody their add on slips and away we went. And he didn't say he didn't say anything to me other than that. Pumpkin Joe's in the house. Pumpkin Joe. Welcome. Welcome. For D is here for D gaming. All right. So, you know, I would say that he had a very, very uh non-traditional way of presenting things talked about how everybody is connected to each other talked about gave us reading assignments in the Tao Te Ching and and or however, however you say it, different things and my mind started to expand and open up and accept the fact that we were in fact interconnected and then one day I would say we're we're midway through the through the through the semester he had had a couple of private meetings with me saying, you're doing great. You know, you're, you're, you're a great mentee and understanding how the, you know, the way of the world, how it really works. Uh, and, but he said, you have a couple of negative things inside you. And if you don't make those go away, a couple, he was being generous. I have a lot of negativity in me. He says, if, it, if, if you don't work on that, then your, your magic powers, your secret powers are going to go away. And I go, what secret powers? He said, well, oh, oh uh, you don't have any. No, no, I didn't mean to say it that way. He said, you're going to be soon. You're going to be able to see something that very, very few people are able to see. And, and I was shocked. You know, I was like, what? He goes, but you're going to have to spend, a, you know, some time accepting this idea that we're all interconnected. So, uh I figured that he was hypnotizing me. They was giving me, he was delivering subconscious thoughts, you know, but anyway, I was accepting of them. That was the whole point. So a few sessions pass and I'm coming in late to class one day. I'm about 10 minutes late. He's already, he's already talking and I'm standing in the doorway and he's looking towards me. And then he puts his hand up in front of the, in front of the classroom and he's waving it. Stop. We're stopping. And I'm I'm in the classroom looking at the class and I'm frozen, almost like frozen in time, because I see something. I see something absolutely beautiful and amazing. And he he says, he says, stop. Something's happening. And he turns and he looks at me and he says, Dan, what do you sing? describe to the class what you're seeing i say so i say to him i'm seeing a spider web a spider web yeah it's like a spider web you know and what is it doing i said it's it's connecting us to each other i said i see this spider web and it has and everybody is connected to each other and he goes okay can you tell the believers from the non-believers the believe in the can you tell the people that are here because they just need to get credit for the class? Or can you tell me the people that are believers that were in the interconnectedness and this philosophical belief uh, that I'm trying to get everybody to understand? I said, so I looked around the classroom and I said, yes, I can tell. I said, how can you tell? Do not point at anyone. He says, this isn't a game. This isn't a thing where you're going to out anybody. You know, that's not what I'm asking. Uh, I don't want you to point at anyone. I just want you to tell me how you can tell who believes and who doesn't. I can see their, I can see a bubble around them. Oh, you can see there, you can see the aura or the energy bubble. I said, yes. So how do you, how, how can you describe it to me? I said, well, the people that are in the huge energy bubbles are the, I would say would be the believers. 
and the ones that have the narrow aura, the very thin one around their their body, would I would put them in the category as, you know, as questionable. He says, you actually are seeing it, aren't you? I said, yes. He goes, okay, all right, I'm convinced. So Sir Luke says, Dan, we are all part of the universe. Everything is connected, all the stardust. All right, so anyway, it was a pretty scary, it was a pretty, I was frightened by the whole experience. So he says, he says, thank you, Dan, take your seat. And everybody is staring at me, you know? Everybody's staring at me and I'm hearing comments in the room. You are so weird. After class is over, he says, I would like for you to stay behind for a few moments. And then I, I did. And then when everybody was cleared the room, he said to me, what were the ethnicities of the believers? Because you know, and I know that there was a connection and I go, yes, I saw it. And he goes, I didn't want to ask you in class i didn't want anybody i didn't want to create a stir but tell me so that i know that you are actually seeing what i was seeing when i'm standing up here what was the eth ethnicity what was the connection i said the connection was they were all they were all east indian or they were all asian and he goes thank you he says dismissed <laughs> i got things to do i got papers to grade so i go right and Later, after the class, he says it was one of the most memorable experiences that he had ever that he that he had ever had. He said that it very, very re rarely happens. It maybe has happened three or four times in his entire teaching career, almost 40 years. He has had this happen. And somehow when he met me, he could see it. He could see that that I was going to have the experience. He doesn't really know. He doesn't really know why it occurs, but he did warn me. He said, you have a uniqueness about you, a unique, a, a unique force around you that if you, if you use it for evil as opposed to good, it will be gone. <laughs> All right. So that's, that's the exp explanation on that. That is how I relate to the law of oneness. The next one, very, very important one. It's called the law of compensation. Whenever you, whatever you sow, you will reap. It is the mantra for the law of compensation. This law is activated when you contribute to what you're manifesting. So the universe in general does not really care whether you're in it for evil or whether you're in it for good. It doesn't know the difference. What it does know, in my opinion, is it knows that it loves you. And so whatever you request of it, it's going to deliver to you. And so if you're requesting, uh, if you're requesting to be poor, unhappy, sad, uh, focus on, on death and destruction, so will your life become the focus of death and destruction. And so when I discovered this, then I started, and it's a very, very difficult, it was not easy thing for me. This was a very, very difficult transition. One of the most trans, uh, one of the most difficult transitions that I ever made in my entire life. And one reason is, is because we're getting bombarded with negativity all day long. And you have to train. Now, Naomi's here. You have to train your brain to ignore this negativity and only focus on positive aspects of your life. This is very, very difficult. We're being bombarded with it on television, on YouTube, and everywhere that we go, it's part of human nature to gravitate more towards, or it seems like to me, it's more part of nature to gravitate towards the negative than the positive. We love death and destruction. We love to watch uh, horror movies in which the person gets his head lopped off. I have no idea why that is. We go and we open up a newspaper and on page one, are the stories of doom and gloom and buried in the paper, uh, you know, just a little bit below the, the, the center crease are the stories of health and happiness. <laughs> because that death and destruction and war and nuclear war, they sell newspapers and happiness 
you know, as in the, the type of happiness I'm experiencing today in the Philippines is not newsworthy. <laughs> it does not. It does not sell newspapers and it does not gain subscribers to your channel. <laughs> so that's how I that's how I view that. <laughs> All right. The law of comp uh, the law of compensation. Uh, we talked about. Let's see. Oh, the law of compensation. The law of gender relates to masculine and feminine energy that exists in all things. To apply this, you have to achieve the balance between the two. So it's a, it can be a struggle at times to accept. Uh, but hey, what, what can I say? I, embra I embrace my feminine side. <laughs> Let's move on to the uh, to law of cause and effect. All actions have a reaction, whether good or bad. I just talked about that. You might not experience the effect right away, but it surely will happen. And so we're talking about what is known in the Philippines as the karmic reaction. You know, oh, karma is going to find you. And I, uh, Daisy Lynn is here, and I always thought, there was some kind of conflict between the karmic reaction and uh, the Catholic uh, history of the Philippines. But I, I no longer believe that. I believe they go well together. And so, <laughs> so whenever I, so like I said, the universe does not know the difference between good or evil. So when you do an evil thing, there, there is always the reaction to it. And they know that in the Philippines as being the karmic reaction of uh, what you have done. So the law of cause and effect is very no well known. All actions have that reaction, whether good or bad. And so uh, I framed it in the way of karma. Law of relativity. Your reality boils down to your perception. It allows you to understand life with a greater uh, compassion and comparison. And so it's, it is the area where I'm the most critical. You know, it is the area where I need the most work. Folks, you, I, Larry, and Leonard, oftentimes we could be looking at the same picture and we have a different view of that picture. We, we could be viewing a set of circumstances and we, and we just simply do not view it the same way. Our perception of reality is different. The way we perceive it is different. I want to give you an example. I have a, a terrible habit that has been displayed right here on this channel. And it happened recently involving the Mac Daddy. Now, I don't see the Mac Daddy around here today, right? But you have to wait for a person to complete their thought or their sentence before you give them an answer or you respond to, to what they're saying. And I'm very unfair that way. I make assumptions about what people are about to say as opposed to waiting them, waiting for them to complete their thought. So I have, I have lousy critical thinking skills, but I'm getting better. I'm getting much, much better. So I have to remind myself at times, let them complete their thought before you comment. Let them complete their thought before you comment. And I have a very, very bad habit of not allowing people to do that. So what I end up doing is I'm speaking more than I'm listening. And it's the listening that is the key, that is the key in my opinion, to success and life and this universe. It is the listening that comes into play. All right, next thing, uh, love of uh, perpetual transmutation of energy. Your actions are preceded by thoughts and tend to fluctuate. You activate this law by remaining positive regardless of the surrounding energies. And we talked about that. So pay more attention to the positive things that are going on around you as opposed to the negative things. The law of polarity. There is a positive and negative to everything. You can activate this law by uncovering what's happening on the opposite end of the spectrum. 
Huh. The law of polarity, there is a positive and negative to everything. So you can activate this by uncovering what's happening on the opposite end of the spectrum. Yes. Yeah, so I guess I talked about that and that pay attention to what's going around you. And it, I'm, at first glance, I'm just thinking um, about this. At first glance, something can, set, can tend to be viewed or your perception can be viewed your perception of it can be viewed in the in the negative realm, but actually turns out to be a very positive thing. Dan, maybe many of us think about how we will respond instead of hearing what they're saying. Exactly. So we we uh, we will ignore the very important thoughts that they're trying to share because we're formulating a response in advance. And I think that I think Larry makes a very very good point. The law of correspondence. If your life appears to be out of order or you're content, it is a reflection of what's happening internally. So whatever you're thinking inside is going to manifest itself in some way. Uh, it's going to be part of who you are. The law of inspired action. Similar to the law of action, you attract what you want in life. You activate this by creating a space for internal guidance so you oftentimes are welcoming in you're welcoming in these ideas the idea that um the idea that you're willing to accept uh improvement change you're willing to accept accept these ideas um and you're willing to open up your mind to having having to ch change your ideas about what your traditional um, uh, acceptance of, of ideas were. You're willing to change, and that goes a long way in um, in becoming a you know a part of of the bigger collective, if you will. So anyway, anyway, you know um, something something crossed my mind. I want to talk about now that we're through those. I don't know if I missed one or two. I may have. Uh, but let's talk about, so I was watching a live stream last night, regular guy, you know, regular guy. Uh, I I'm starting to like him a lot. I'm starting to like his channel a lot. And the reason why I am is because he's more of a free spirit than he is not. And that's one of the reasons why I like him. So he can say or do things that you may not like but he will not make any apologies for the type of person that he is. So that he's being, he has demonstrated that he's true to himself. He's true to his belief and he accepts them. But yet I also noticed this about him. He's willing to change. If he'll, he won't be dismissive of the thoughts that are, be, that are being presented to him. He thinks about it. And then he'll say, you know something, perhaps you're you're right. I'm willing to explore changing my view on that. You know, or when someone suggests su suggest to him, perhaps you should try going to this province because I've been there and you'll have a completely different experience. He actually will consider it and say, you know, I think I will go there. And then when he says those words, I will go there. He actually does it. I mean, that's very, very unique in, in a person where they actually, where you're actually going to see follow through 100%, 100% follow through when he makes the commitment that he's going to do it for good or for bad or for whatever happens, he'll usually say, I'm going, you see what I'm saying? I mean, that's very, very, that's very unique in a person for good or for bad or for indifference, I'm taking this journey. <laughs> so, anyway, let's bring up the panel and let's see what they have to say about this stuff. By the way, this stuff that I've talked about does not, it does not go against, in my opinion, a belief, your religious beliefs or belief in God or what you believe in. As a matter of fact, it becomes a companion along with it. That's just how I view it, you know? I don't view it as being witchcraft or anything like that. 
I suppose that, like I said, you could, you, if you know these laws and you put them in play, I suppose it's easy to use them for, for, I mean, for a person that, that has evil intent to be able to take advantage of it. You know, you can, you actually pro, you most likely can manu, manipulate somebody or a circumstance or event or a series of events by practicing some of these, th these things. Oh, there's Larry. There's Leonard. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time, guys. We're hey, 50, no problem. Welcome. We're yep, 55 and 21. We're 55 minutes and 22 seconds into the stream. Thank you. Thank you. So I do believe in karma, but the thing is, Mike, it was a very, very odd thing when people, when I started hearing the use of this, of this term when I arrived in the Philippines. So you can't, I, I don't think it's necessary to remind somebody that they may have a negative karmic reaction to their, to what they've just done or what they've just said. Oh, by the way, it's reminding me, do words have meaning? Of course they do. Yes, they do. Uh, yeah, they have meaning. And, you know, I've destroyed relationships in a second yep. be because of the use of my, my, my words. Well, you're talking about karma. Uh, that reminds me when I was a kid. Uh, could be a religious thing. I don't know. But I was always told you reap what you sow. Right. So, you know, uh, be careful what you do. And, and, and so that's, like I said, basically the same thing as karma. That, that's why yeah. you reap what you sow. Yeah, I heard it that way also. You know, the golden rule and all that. Well, tell me. Gentlemen, what kind of a factor impact did they have on your lives? Well, as a kid, not much because I was a wild one. I mean, you know, uh, now when you get older, you think about it. Uh, I do believe that uh, you should treat everybody kind and polite unless they're rude and mean to you. And then are you uh, going to be mean and rude to them? No, just you don't have to be polite to them, though. Yeah. You don't have to be kind to them. You don't have to associate with them. No, uh, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you treat everybody with, with respect until they prove they don't deserve it, and then they probably will never get it back. But that respect is limited. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if you know a person's uh, messed you over or, or uh, has done things that is uh, harmful to you or people you care about, how do you respect that? You know, you, Would you, you know, seek Larry. revenge on them, Larry? No, no. Uh, like I said, you know, I, I do believe in karma. I just always heard it as you reap what you sow. Michael McFarland, welcome, welcome. Appreciate your time. Hello, Michael. Hello, Michael. Have you, you sought doing, revenge? Sir? Have you sought? Have you sought revenge, um, Larry Lee? I could tell you straight up that I have. Uh, it depends on what you mean by revenge. Did, did I inform people about have how you the other tried, Have you sought out acted? to harm somebody who had caused harm to you? No. No. Uh, I have. Uh, <laughs> I hate to admit it, but I have too in my younger well, like days. I said, you're talking about the individual. Now, uh, no, I've not sought to hurt somebody else physically, uh, uh, emotionally, or uh, uh, psychologically. Am I buffering, I said, guys? If, I, if I don't really right like now. somebody, uh, I will inform that person of, the, of what the person did. Uh, I've done that, but like I said, I've never tried to physically hurt somebody. That you know. No, we're I've not talking about just myself. physically hurting, and we're talking about emotionally, financially. I've never tried uh, to financially hurt somebody. Uh, emotionally, no. yeah, I think I have. Yeah, like I, I never said, have financially. I know, all right, I. I knew a guy and uh, who uh, was dating this girl I knew, and he was messing around with her sister. I made sure the sister knew about it. As a matter of fact, I helped the sister catch him. Yeah. But I didn't physically hurt anybody. Uh, and that I don't know if that hurt him as much as it hurt his, her sister. But she needed to know because she came saying, I think it's going on. I said, well, let's go find out. Yeah. And so we went and found out and it was going on. 
What about your story? What about your story, Leonard? Well, somebody messed with my brother. And I waited till the prime opportunity and uh, convinced him. Did, did you pop a cap on, in him? No, no, no. <laughs> I convinced, are, him, I convinced him it wasn't the good idea. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Good. So you guys were plotting harm to that individual and then you, you convinced them not to do it? No, he, he caused problems to my brother. Oh, and I convinced him that that was not the thing he should be doing. Oh, I got you. I got, how did you convince him with a baseball bat? Nah, <laughs> I never had to go quite that far. You just gave him a, a stern warning. You could call it that. <laughs> so Sir Luke is saying, and I agree, hatred and vengeance are wasted emotions. Life is too short. Be positive always for good outcomes in life. Have you or have you not noticed a correlation, uh, Larry and Leonard, between being just an all-around good person <laughs> and, the, and the elimination of misery from your life? I'm Is there a connection? Much, I, I've always... When I've done something wrong, I always admit it. And I think that's coming to help me is when I've been accused of something I didn't do. Because, you know, the people that they were accusing me to, uh, either they knew that I, I'd done something worse and admitted it. It's like, hey, I did that. You know, that, that was yeah. me. And they, they had no way of knowing it was me without me telling them. Right. And, and uh, one of the, uh, at work, uh, and this one I did, the guy was uh, taken off as soon as I got I wasn't even in the building. The guy would leave. Well, I'd be there 15, 20 minutes before I have to start working. So I may want to go to the bathroom or something. I'm a security guard. You don't leave your post. But he left his post. Right. So the next day I confronted him about it and told him I didn't like it. Well, he And I decided the day after that to apologize on my own. So I was apologizing. And the guy was acting like, yeah, he's some small, small, smug jerk. Because I guess he called our boss and told the boss I jumped on him and all this. And he thinks the boss told me to apologize, which he hadn't. So the boss calls me after the guy leaves and I tells me, you know, uh, well, the kid I told him. And I said, look, you can check the swipe outs. You'll see he swiped out before I swiped in. You'll see he swiped out through the... Uh, vehicle gate, which he shouldn't have been inside the vehicle gate. I said, you, you've got all that on records. Check it out. And yeah. then I told him what the guy said to me when I just, I was trying to apologize for losing my temper. And so uh, he did check it out. And uh, the next next day he worked. Because like I said, it's all there on black and white. We got, You got the cameras that he can go back and look as well. And so uh, I guess he read the riot act and the guy wasn't, you know, Smiling after that, you know. Yeah. And uh, so, Nitban but, is here. Oh, hey, hey Nitban. Hey, Nit um, not mean to interrupt you, Larry, but Mike, Mike, you know what? In every live stream and every comment that I've ever seen you post, that I've read, you come across as an all-around good guy, and so I perceive you as such a nice guy. So I just wanted to say that, and so. I've never seen you posted any negative comment anywhere um, where I've crossed your path. So Nitban, I don't know if you noticed, but Nitban has been posting some pictures on Facebook that just yes. makes you, it makes you hungry. Yeah. Uh, I have, a, we got a few other bloggers that do that. And I yes. told him so. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me hungry. <laughs> yeah. I think he, he posts, it's like, Larry, Larry accused me of that once. And not only that, they're healthy meals. They're healthy. They're healthy for you. Don't you guys I, have any? I'm honest have, with you. Most of them aren't. <laughs> I mean, Nitban, really? Do you, a lot of times it's ice cream or 
chicken and, 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 and spaghetti and uh, no i don't do any spaghetti but i do, i will do uh cookies and cakes and stuff yeah and, and like i said i i you know me i like my carbs man yeah <laughs> i had chicken tonight i i didn't feel like cooking so i got some uh, buffalo wings oh, okay and i uh, called the place i usually get my pizza from and got buffalo wings instead uh, next oh, time Chris, I'll order a few less. You know just... Nick Ban, he's a world traveler. It's hard to it's hard to keep up with him. Yep. Yeah, we may we we may run into Great him in our Christmas. travels. You know, oh, you never know with Nick Ban. You never know. Yeah, we might liable, cross paths. He's liable to pop oh, up anywhere. Oh, by the way, uh, coincidentally, Nick Ban, just so you know, in case you're going to be anywhere near Manila, I probably will be there the first week in June, and and it just so happens that. Couple of my friends are going to be there also from parts unknown, and so we're gonna we're we're planning on hooking up when we hit Manila. So it's kind of interesting that it all happened by Coinky Dink. Coinky Dink. Or maybe it, or maybe it's not coincidence. Yeah. It's karma. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. karma, <laughs> or it's a belief in God. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm heading back to Terre Haute the second week of. Uh, uh, actually, it'll be the first full week of June. Uh, I think I told you that before, my cousin George is wanting to have a uh, family reunion at his place. He lives out in the country, got five acres. Now, he's not a farmer. He just he, he likes the country life. And uh, so he wants a family reunion there on the 10th. So I'll take off probably the 5th, drive back home and come back, what, the 12th, something like that. And if the weather's good, we're going to try to get get my mother there. So I will take videos. Hopefully the weather's good. Y'all will be able to see what my mom looks like. Yep. Uh, sweet old lady. She, no, it's a shame she's got uh, she's got uh, oh uh, uh, not Parkinson uh, uh Parkinson basically. Uh, she does. She has a tendency to forget things. But she does remember some things, so we never told her about the family uh, pick, uh, reunion because that we figured it's probably something she would remember. And you don't yeah. want to tell her that you're going to take her to it if the weather's bad because they won't let us take her if the weather's bad. Right. And that would just really disappoint her if she was expecting to go. So we're hoping for good weather on that uh, June 10th so we can take my mom there and uh Three of my four sisters. My oldest sister's not going. They were there Holy in April. Correct. You're in Nepal? Oh, my gosh. Unlimited wow. rice? Where do I sign up for that? <laughs> Dan, you ain't going to lose no weight that way. <laughs> I know, and I have been watching the carbs, but I'm hanging at 203. I weighed myself just prior to coming on live. I need to I don't go by and weigh on. myself again. And I'm still hanging. I'm still hanging with just one meal a day, so I don't know. Yeah, well, I don't know what's going on. With intermittent you. fasting will only do you so much good if you're still eating too much of the wrong stuff. Yeah, which I am. And <laughs> well, I've ideally, cut back. I've cut back. I used to eat uh, when I'm working. I used to eat two cookies or more. The last yeah. few days, I've only had one. So when I'm well, at work, I don't really steps. eat any cookies when I'm off. Baby steps, you know. Yeah. yeah. I've heard cutting back to one. Compared yeah, to losing weight steps. one cookie at a time. <laughs> one cookie at a time. <laughs> yeah. Sweet oh, Lord. so fun. Yeah. One cookie at a time. But, you know, if to kickstart that, if you want to get going on a weight loss, you need to go to, I would suggest doing 90 days of beef, butter, bacon, legs. Yes. <laughs> and that's all. Yes. Thank you for giving me that permission. Well, the thing is, no carbs. Because that's a, a very good elimination diet. And you mm -hmm. go 90 days, that makes sure it's all everything's pretty well cleaned out of your system. Okay, let's see. Beef. Butter. Butter. And bacon, eggs. Bacon, bacon and, and eggs. eggs. All right. Yes. Trouble B and E. Can you that's have what, sausage? All right, I'll 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 yeah, do it. Yeah, you can eat sausage. Enough. Yeah, that'd be close can. enough. Yeah. 
Uh, Mike is making an interesting uh, statement here. Mike is saying, today I was at the mall for tea. And, uh, well, la ti da, Mike. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I say good morning to all. I told lady good morning. She told me no one just says good morning anymore. You know something? And she thanked you. And you know something? On the Jeep, I do that. I'm, so I'm getting on the Jeep, knee. <clears throat> I'll say good morning to everybody. Yeah. And they all just look at me and smile. I get great big smiles. Well, you know, they're, 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 they appreciate the fact that you're taking time to acknowledge them. You're being friendly. Yeah. Uh, you know. And not aggressive, just. Nitman says he's in Kathmandu, and I suddenly feel so hungry here. I <laughs> enough carbs hey. and looking it off. Are Al there any? Elvi, how are you doing, Elvi? Elvi's here. Hey, uh, Nitman, are there any cats in Kathmandu? <laughs> hey, Michael McFarland. Eating only one meal a day, that's uh, intermittent fasting. That's healthy, I think, right? It's, yes, it depends. I mean, some people have to eat two, and some can get away with eating one. The main thing is that whether you're eating one or two, that you shorten that, that feasting window down to where it's only about six or less hours. And that's the uh, only time I, I've you not eat. been able to do that. I've, I've tried to cut it down to two meals, but I got a little more than six hours in between them. Well, you work with what you got, you know. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, I used to have a lot, lot larger window. I would eat breakfast and then eat supper. I'm trying to wait and eat my breakfast or lunch later or earlier. It depends on how you want to yeah. look at it. Instead of eating when I first get to uh, work, Mike I'm is saying fasting is not good well. for the body change, how much you eat and what you eat. So I think that that I, – I think that – um Fasting when you're trying to get the weight off it initially, it can't pop, can't be a bad thing. But then no. you have to reassess. Uh, I think a better way to go, probably, I could be wrong on this, but is probably something like three or four small meals per day. I know. No. I notice when I, I, I notice when my Leonard says no. I watch Minnie. I watch Minnie. Minnie's been gaining a lot of weight lately. She's probably at one ten. She went from a size zero to a size three. Uh -oh. We've been talking. We've been talking about this, right? And uh, I watch. In initially, I think the problem is I'm messing up her diet because initially, when I watch Minnie, Minnie, Minnie will eat many small meals per day, but she does. She does what's called uh, conscious eating, and so she. It's really subconscious eating in Minnie's case. She doesn't really think about, she doesn't rely on food as being anything other than keep her, keeping her alive, necessary in order to keep her alive. Yes. Well, when I, I view food, I view it as being something totally different. You enjoy well, they, they say many of us yeah. view, view food and we just eat until we're full. Instead of, well, see, oh, that's oh, the we, thing about that's beyond the thing being about, full. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing about the intermittent fasting. You don't portion control. You don't count calories or anything like that. You just, and especially if you're eating a very low carb, high fat diet, that will give you all your protein, all the fats you need to digest the protein. And because one big thing people will tell you, oh, well, you don't get enough fiber. There is no RDA for fiber. Your body does not require fiber. And those who might question, oh, well, gee, well, how will I go number two? Uh, that's, what, that's part of what the fat does. And another thing, if you're eating, if you're eating all those animal proteins, they're more thoroughly digested. There's less ends up being excreted. Can I manifest myself thin? That is the question. If you're willing to put the effort in. Well, like I said, with, with me, the food and what I eat is at the point of purchase. Okay? Yeah. That's where I make my decision because I, I don't have the self-control that I should have. If I buy two cookies, I'm eating two cookies. Uh, yeah. That's why I don't buy any cookies on my days off. I don't eat them. Uh, and I'm trying to cut back to just getting one hey, later Nicole. on, maybe none, or maybe just a couple a week. 
but it, it, right now I'm just getting one, and I buy it late in the day instead of early. Uh, I wait hey, till Melanie. after. I, I used to have one with my first cup of coffee, and then I'd have another one with my second cup or my uh, drink after my second cup of coffee. Yeah. So now I'm trying to wait till my second cup of coffee, or not after the second cup of coffee. Right. I don't have I don't have anything with my first cup of coffee, and I do. And when I say cup of coffee. Uh, the, the, these are 17 ounce uh, mugs. I have uh, containers. I have. I drink the whole thing. Yeah. I just call that a cup. It's actually about yeah. a cup and a half. But you know how that is. So yeah, actually, about, that's actually that's uh, that's about three little, cups, two of them. That's a little over two cups. <laughs> no, it's, no, it depends. Now, I don't. I don't a cup believe an eight ounce cup is a cup. That, it's just not well, a cup to me. No, it's not to me either. But that's so, technically I mean, what a it's cup at is. least a 12 ounce cup to be a cup yeah and that's not that big i mean it really isn't an eight ounce cup is what, what they would call a teacup not a coffee mug well, it's not <laughs> a mug no hey nip Ann said he's gonna post pictures of cats that'll be cool <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he says the people there and it are uh they're skinny and happy and that's good i mean yeah. uh what better what what Beautiful culture. It sounds beautiful. Yeah. No, it's cold there. You can keep it. And uh, Mike is saying, when I'm in the Philippines, I say hi and talk to everyone. My my Asawa says people tell her I am uh, not like other foreigners. Well, huh? I wonder if that I wonder if that's the Americans going around giving giving themselves a bad name again. Well, there are, I, I mean, there are there are some doing that definitely. Because quite frankly, I've never met. A Canadian that you know that I dislike, well, uh, but then again, I did one time cross the border, and the guy the guy tears my car apart, goes through every the rental car goes through every nook and cranny, and I was really mad, you know, seeing there finds absolutely nothing, you know, and so then you puts that all back, back together, together, and then I'm just like staring at him because he he, he hangs me up there at the border for like three hours. And then later, I see him in the movie theater on the U.S. side of the border with his kid. Yeah. You know, and I was like, I, w I wanted to go up and say something to him, but he gave me a look like, I'm not working. and I'm with my kid. He kind of like points to his kid. And I was yeah. like, all right, man. Peace. Yeah. Love. You know, and so I left him alone, but I was kind of pissed. That's not the symbol I would have flown. <laughs> but <laughs> well, you know, I got pulled over by a, a cop one time in San Diego, and uh, I got pulled over for drunk driving. I wasn't drunk. I got, the thing got thrown clear out of, clear out of the court. Uh, back then, point uh, one oh was the uh, blood alcohol. Yeah. I was like point oh five, point oh four. I I walked the street line, touched the nose, did everything, but he still arrested me for drunk driving. And he said, "Where I could search your car. And I, oh, that took me off. I said, you do. You go right ahead and search it. But you better find something. Or otherwise, I'm suing you. Because he, he didn't have any reason to search my car outside of being a jerk. So yeah. So anyway, anyway, to, I went to court over this. Because, you know, I missed some time. In the, uh, I was late getting to, on ship the next day. Which may have, I was UA without, you know. They told right. me if I got it taken care of and I got it dismissed, uh, they would dismiss the charges for uh, UA. So I go in. I'm thinking I'm going to have to plead not guilty, get a lawyer. It's going to cost me all this money to fight this. So I'm sitting there, and the clerk calls me up. And she told me it's going to be 10, 15 minutes. It's not even been five yet. I didn't even finish my first cigarette. So I go up. I said, which courtroom? She says, do the one that... The DA says he's throwing it out of court because he said the judge would let me out of court because, you know, you passed everything. And so I let, a little later on, I get a letter from the court telling me that my arrest record had been changed to uh, they, protective custody or something like that. Uh, the, the, the police officer got a letter of reprimand in his permanent record, was suspended for a month. So in other words, this he is must have been serious. 
He must he have might, done this more than once. I was just they were say, part of his bull. This must have been a habit. Yeah. Now, so they um, were going to break him of the habit. Now, Michael. Michael, that's yeah. Old, that's old school thinking. Yeah, but if you do, well, wait, wait a minute now. But Ma'am Minnie is a good. She she would be the anecdotal proof, if you will, that this works because she'll take so much time eating, right? And I eat so fast. I shovel it in. I'm like this. Bop, 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 bop. Man, many will sit there one spoonful at a time. Yeah. Well, that's one thing that's supposed to be better is to eat slow. Thoroughly chew your food. Eat slow. I eat, I eat really fast also. And um, I do too. But that 20 minutes before your brain knows your stomach's full is totally not true. Because when you get to the point of satiation, the leptin proteins are sent and your brain knows immediately. So it, it isn't 20 minutes. The, wow, you're, 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 a, you're, uh, you should become an, um, YouTube nutritionist. If there weren't uh, already a couple thousand of them, I would possibly think about it. I, I I would say I'm that just um, repeating, I'm just repeating what the ones I listen to and follow say. LV is I, saying, LV here is saying you can manifest it, Sir Dan, with a matter of self discipline. Yes. And then Mike is saying I lost my weight by changing the size of my plate. Well, there is something to that. Because uh, it's Definitely. the eye, the eye hand uh, when you look at it, yeah. the smaller plate. Makes it look like you got more on your plate. Right. And it can fool your brain into thinking that you're full when you finish the plate. Yeah. Well, I and should I'll, be able to I'll lose read. weight here in the Philippines because everything they serve you is on a small plate. Yeah. Now, I'm going <laughs> to say something to Michael here. Small McFarland food here. on a small plate. I'm going to say something to Michael McFarland here. Now, Mike, I don't know if he was with pay or without pay, but uh, if they put a letter of reprimand in your permanent record, that will hold you back on promotions and stuff, and they will not do something like that on your first offense. The man didn't no. even have a legitimate reason for pulling me over. He pulled me over because somebody slammed on the brakes. He's around the corner. He can't see every anybody. Hey, hey, what's his name? What's his name? We have a retired San Diego police officer that comes over to the Duncan. Yeah. Wow. Very, so very nice this, guy. This guy. This was back <laughs> in the. This guy was back in the seventies. Ah. So he he would be he was probably older than I am, so he'd be in his seventies now. So he'd been retired probably twenty years or more. Uh, but I don't remember his name. I don't care to hey, remember Randall. his name. Uh, but like I said, they they sent me. I never asked. I never even got a lawyer. They sent all this information to me, so I hey, wouldn't get a lawyer to go after him. Thanks for coming to the friends. live today, Randall. Because, like I said, he didn't even have a legitimate reason to pull me over. What he heard right. was a car, which a car ran a red light. I pull out, the car runs a red light, has to slam on his brakes to keep from hitting me because I pull out to a red light to stop. And this guy didn't see anything. And what he should have done if he's going to pull anybody over, he should have pulled everybody over that was in that line when he heard <laughs> the, the brakes. And he only pulled the first car over. Mike's killing me. Larry, that is karma, or is that karma or God giving you uh, blessings? I think, I, think, I think it's both. If you want to know the truth, because uh, like very I said, fun. I could have been in serious trouble with the Navy. That's very uh, fun. And uh, so God bless me that uh, the guy didn't know uh, the guy uh, had been in trouble before. That the uh, I never had to get a lawyer or anything. Everything like I said, they looked at my ticket and just dismissed everything. You I, see how I I had mentioned earlier one of the early uh, live shows about how how smart people are how intelligent and this is proof where lv rose says haha unfortunately the small serving plate here in the philippines is not for diet sir it's for business yeah. <laughs> yes it's, it's all about the profit not yep. that profit <laughs> this profit <laughs> right <Yep>. here <laughs> yeah oh we're having so much fun today yeah. very oh, yeah. very oh, very funny good. lv <laughs> <laughs> and LV's, but LV's correct too. It may be funny, but it's yep. correct. Yeah, Absolutely. you know, if you if you go to LV's stream, she's she's pretty she's pretty witty. Oh yeah, you know, 
I've been know, a, she's, I've been a she cracks me up sometimes. Some of the stuff she says, you know, she's like the she's like the female version of Dan, you know. <laughs> uh, I, I'm sorry, I would never insult her that way. <laughs> <laughs> she is so much fun. You guys need to go sign up for her live stream. I've been to one or two of her live streams. I have. Yeah. Well, I haven't been able to catch her. I've seen, I've I've seen a couple channel. of her videos. She, but I she does more tongue-in-cheek stuff than I ever will. I'm telling you, she does. Uh, <laughs> she knows. See that? She's, <laughs> she knows I'm telling the truth. No, I'm lying to you, Larry. I'm lying to you. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I know when you're lying, Dan? <laughs> My lips are moving. There you go. <laughs> My lips are moving. <laughs> Uh, I hope everybody uh, knows that we're just joking around with each other. Oh, right. yeah. But I mean, most of these, most of these people, people been here like enough. Most of these people been here serious. enough times. We like each know. other. We're just joking around. We have a All right, so uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to mention that regular guy, he mentioned in his live stream last night, if you go back and you watch it, he mentioned that YouTube is changing. Who was the first to say it? Dan. And it's going to be more about storytelling. And I believe he's right. And the reason why I know he's right is because if you look in there, you look at the, the most successful YouTube channels, they're telling this story. And they're telling it. He He's doing pictures where he's doing the voiceover. Now, I had said that I was working on one. And the thing is, I don't want to spoil it by, by apologizing in advance. But I am going to do it. <laughs> I'm apologizing in advance or telling you what I've done. So I was not able, I was not able to go in and find the photographs that I needed to accompany the story. So what I ended up doing was I ended up walking around town and I was very, I, I went up to, I went walking around the brand guy and I said, may I take your picture? It's probably going to show up in a YouTube story, but it's not, you know, but you have to be very open minded about what kind of story is going to be accompanying the picture. Oh, sure. But they they all they all agreed and they, they agreed. So with a big smiling face. And so it's yeah. not the most it's not the most positive impressions video that I've ever done. And so I'm a little bit I, I get queasy in the stomach when I start thinking about. Perhaps I shouldn't use these pictures. Or I should put a disclaimer at the beginning of the video saying that these pictures are for illustration purposes only. And yes. so what do you guys think that I should I should do there? Uh, well, you'd go ahead. Uh, personally, I would go ahead and do it. I mean, uh, if it makes you feel better to say, to put the disclaimer in, you can put the disclaimer yeah. in. Or you can just mention it in your uh... because, because I'm doing a I'm doing a video about about uh, what my first trip, my first impression to the to the Philippines, and it was a way it's a way different place opinion. then than it is now. Yeah. And so, like said, you know, your disclaimer would be: This is your first trip. This is how you felt on that first trip, and it's your opinion only. Nobody else's. Because uh, that's what it is, you know. It's it's how you felt about it. Uh, Mike is saying, "Do you believe in the Bible as the Word of God or a book to help us?" I haven't decided yet, Mike. That's my answer. Yeah, the biggest issue I, I have about that question is the fact that it was written from and compiled in 388 by a, just a bunch of scholars. Who decided what was going to be in it and what wasn't? Hey, Brian, how's it going? Unfortunately, there's a lot of discrepancies about what should have been there and what maybe shouldn't have been. Mm -hmm. So it's well, like hard said, to call it. A, a lot of the stories, uh, when I say stories, I mean like the Good Samaritan uh, and some of those. Oh, because, oh. Why I think those disclaimer. are just stories yeah. to try to help people be better. Uh, Brian's, yeah. Brian's right. I should explain a little bit more about it. All right. So because it's it's a, it's a video on poverty, and the pictures that I'm presenting are not from impoverished people. 
So the whole thing is, I was going to use the pictures to illustrate, um, but they're not, they're actually middle class um, Filipinos. They're not impoverished. They're in, they're in our barangay, which kind of means that if you, if you live in our barangay, you're usually a government worker or you're a healthcare worker, something like that. So you're making a higher salary than most of the Filipinos that are in other barangays, surrounding barangays. So that's why I have uh, this dilemma. Anyway. Yeah, they love to get their picture taken and that's the, yep. that's, and so they, they don't, they don't object to it and they want to be on YouTube. You know, it's the, it's the context, you know, of what I'll be talking about as I do the voiceover while the pictures are scrolling, you know? And so yeah. anyway, I'm, uh, I'm kind of like, uh, still thinking about it. I need to learn how to edit so I can apply either music or words to some, uh, some short videos that I have. You know, and I'm convinced also that short videos will become the thing. Uh, well, I oh, by the way, Larry, it. if you guys follow beekeeping in uh, in paradise, he he did his harvest, right? And so I wanted to buy as much honey as I could get, right? But he, he brings to me, well, Dan, so he says, we meet him in the Dunkin' Donuts and, and uh, uh, Hey Joe is there. Mike from Hey Joe, one of us that dreaming, and his yep. wife uh, uh, Cora are there, and so they're there. And I had noticed that Mike was trying to get a hold of me, saying, "Hey, Brent's here at the Duncan. We're hanging out. He brought you some honey." So anyway, so uh, honey, go go grab the. I heard you. Oh, you heard me. In the kitchen. Ah, Hi, she brought it over. Hi, how you doing, man? man? Hi, Hi Miss Lee. Hey, okay, man, so baby, here, how are you? now Hi, this man. is this is the coolest thing, right? So look at this. Is that a he honey bear? It. He harvested himself. Yeah, it's a honey bear. Okay. And then he's a marketing genius, right? So he puts this, he puts this, he attaches it to the to the honey. Oh yeah. Yeah. His YouTube channel name, Beekeeping in Paradise. Yeah. Listen, folks, this is a really big deal. Because we don't have any, as far as I know, we don't have any honey farms other than uh, Brent uh, growing honey or manufacturing honey right here and then harvesting it. And his, his objective is he's got to grow those. He's got to grow those colonies so that he can have a big honey harvest. So this is his first one. He tells me he, he harvested 50 pounds. And he saved this eight ounces for me. Yeah. That's good. So the first 50 pounds went like that. So the price of this was t was uh, 280 pesos. I was happy to pay it because this is such a big deal. This is probably like the first honey harvest and bye-bye late that has happened in I don't know how many years. I don't recall ever knowing about a bee farm being here. He said there was one, and it disappeared uh, some time ago. Mm. Well, like I said, I I, I worked with a guy. Uh, I was a guard. He was a, a factory worker, and that's what he did on the side. He had a, he had the uh, honeybee farm that he and he sold his honey. He usually had his and uh, uh, the the honey bear uh, bottles as well, and, but they also. They got the big bear. I mean, they got the eight ounce like you got, and then they got one that's like a full pound. Uh, they got some, but yeah, I, I like the honey, and you can also get it in the regular. Oh, and by the way, I did the finger test, so I just would like to. I did the same thing with. So I said, "Is it okay? Will I insult you if I do the finger test?" He started laughing at me. Um, well, because Brent, Brent had all, because you can't tell. He 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 said to me, "Oh." I mean, because he already knew the story of yeah. my finger test in Cebu. And so he had already uh, pretty much, he, he was ready for it. And so he said, sure, yeah. Danny was laughing at me. And so I just yeah. went in there and I just, I just, it is so good. Now guys. you make me want some honey, Dan. Now cut it out. 
Yep. It is so delicious, guys. Well, did I you'll just never get even damn? Uh, you'll never get off your carb addiction. Yeah, well, it I is so toast. good, Leonard. Or, 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 I would yeah. make toast, or I would put the bread in the microwave just to melt the butter, and then I would uh, sprinkle some uh, cinnamon on it and put yeah. honey on it. Oh, so good. Oh, that oh, would be oh, good. Oh, 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 it was so good. <laughs> yeah. But that's just not, like, like Leonard will tell you, that's not good for us. Nope. That is so bad having that much carbs, you know. Not the butter. Yeah. yeah, that's it, Brian. Yeah. No, the butter. The butter's good, but uh, I don't want to insult. I don't want to insult uh, my neighbors. That's number one, right? On my subject matter. No, no the the bread but I the, get is only got like uh, copyright pictures are all over the place. You know, if you go into Google Images, the problem is sometimes they charge a bunch of money for each picture for the license to use it, even on YouTube. So. Yeah. Going into the public domain and trying to find these pictures is very difficult to do because right now, the topic of, of uh, poverty in the Philippines, it's a hot topic. And so you'll, you'll notice a lot of people posting uh, pictures. But So I have to go and I have to take the pictures myself. So I took these pictures... Uh, I found one or two that weren't in that weren't copyrighted pictures in Google Images, and then when Man Media and I go over to um, La Hoog, we're going to be going into Mandawi, into that area where regular guy hung out, and we're going to be taking some photographs of some of the things going on in those poor areas of Mandawi. Then I think I'll have enough pictures to roll a very short two or three minute video about one of my first impressions and family first and a family yep. to the Philippines. So that's what the whole thing's about. I've been three years or so on YouTube and, um, oh, yeah. I'm going to do my we'll first always understand family. Annie, Anna, yeah, yeah, Anna I'm going to do my first go get her son from school. Yeah. Impression, uh, impression, impressions video. You guys know what I'm talking about here, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I got yeah. some pictures. I, I I don't know how to do it. I need to take it to a, a photo place and have them taken off the reel and put on a uh, a flash uh, one of uh, these things. Flash you know? drive, thumb drive, yeah. Thumb drive. Thank you. And then yeah, the attention span is shrinking. You know, <laughs> and uh, what I'm saying I've is got I, a... I'd like to get these pictures on on the thumb drive and then put it on the computer. This is from my trip to China back in '99. Oh yeah. my gosh! I, I think I that would be a. I'm gummed up. Yep. <laughs> yeah, but you enjoyed that, honey, didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> but now, now my my mouse on my laptop is all gummed up. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, Dan. Yeah. That honey, it because the fact that it's got uh, fructose as well as sugar. Mm -hmm. You might as well have just drank a. A fifth of vodka. Oh, 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 oh. Because it has the uh, same, it has the same. Uh, I'd rather drink the vodka, quite frankly. <laughs> <laughs> it has the same effect on your metabolism as alcohol. Oh, my goodness. Could I have a spice rum instead? Captain Morgan? <laughs> sure. Captain Morgan gonna, and Coke if, Zero. I'll get my buzz on. <laughs> yeah. But you get enough you get enough fructose and stuff out of the out of the alcohol. To, I'm gonna tell you uh, the truth. I, I disagree with Dan. I'd rather have the honey. It just tastes, <laughs> oh, <laughs> honey. With cinnamon. You, yeah. it tastes like almost like a French toast. You yeah. guys like I and I like love French toast. Oh my goodness. Yeah, crazy. that's one of my weaknesses too. I have been talking with a friend of mine about opening an American pancake pancake house. Now why? Remember we were talking about, oh, you're retired. Why would you want the misery of taking American money and just so I could have a place to go and have pancakes? Yeah. You can imagine you'd only have to be open but damn. from like five in the morning until yeah, but until are you 12. gonna be the one working? Because then you won't be able to No, no, I can't work. I can't work. No. You know, man Minnie would have damn. to do the whole thing. Yeah, yeah but you wouldn't yeah. be able to travel. But you can't eat them. I know. <laughs> I know. Get the buckwheat pancakes. They're probably a little healthier. Oh, my goodness they're, gracious. They're probably a little, little less bad. I'd have to look that up. I've been going Pretty to Pretty Chismusia. Did I say that right? Pretty Chismusia. 
Whose ninja channel is that, or is that your primary channel? I'm curious. Yeah, but it does have great healing powers, as Brian pointed out. And if you grow weed with bees, you'll have THC, THC CBD infused honey. That's the future of natural medicine. That's yes. interesting. That is yeah, actually that's interesting. Not, that's not natural medicine. <laughs> Dez says background laundry day. Yeah. Laundry day for me, Des, is uh, Thursday. It would be Friday morning for you guys. Uh, I do my laundry after I get off work on Thursday. I probably start it somewhere between 4 and 5 o'clock in the afternoon, which would be 4 or 5 in the morning in the Philippines. And then I I get done about two hours after I start. So, yeah, I agree with that. I, I used to do my laundry on my day off. and do But I don't. Day, and I was like, my THC do I certainly my is day not natural, med. Uh, day and off, uh, I don't think CBD is either. Oh, I think this is worth reading. Uh, hey, Mike Tim, said, how you doing? I know, hey, I know I'm way behind in the chat, but Mike is saying, I listen to many of these Republicans talking about the Bible, how they use a piece, use a piece, not the whole story. This is the problem using it for evil, uh, using good for evil. We need to get common sense back again. That's, I, I agree. That's true. I'll give I agree. you an amen on that one, Mike. Uh, 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 I mean, how Mike, come it's always the Republicans caught fooling around? Yeah. Uh, monkey business, right, Mike? Well, you you remember the monkey remember, business? You got was that was he? The, the Democrats. You know, so, the, the Republicans the monkey are the conservatives. Business, the, both the monkey business? And they have, that was Gary they Hart. Have, he was a Democrat. <laughs> but I agree. I mean, you got you, you can't point out, oh, well, this here, because the Bible, Lou. if you read the Bible, it says something hey, about do not. Do hey, Lou not looks basically. like a lot like uh, Larice. Yeah, she does. She has uh, Larice's lips. Lou, yeah. give Larice her lips back. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, like I was saying, though, if you read the Bible, it's kind of like it says don't drink. But there's also a passage in there. Give wine unto them of the heavy of heart. And give hard liquor or alcohol to those who are about to die. So there, are, it does say there's times that you can drink. Right. So you can and use then, whatever passage you want. However you want. It's not yeah. just the Christians that do this. Nope. The extremists and the and I'm, not, I'm not saying the Muslims are bad, but they're, the extremists use parts of the Quran the same way. Oh, this, and they're not taking the whole thing into consideration. Right. Uh, so I think a lot of, if not all religions, hey, Jim, are, how are you? By the extremists are abused. Uh, passages are abused. Yep. I, I like the passages that says, "Be kind to each other." You know, treat each other I, with respect. I do unto others as you would have them do unto you. One of the golden <laughs> rules of the Bible. Mike is right about this, right? They all gather. Let's all gather at the meeting place to do laundry yep. and to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, I you bet know. you you and Mel are together, right, guys? You and Mel are together. They're having the, Chispa. Uh Barangay of Caridad. Uh, anyway. <laughs> like I said, I mean, you know, uh, to me, I, I'm not going to judge anybody. Uh, I may... I should say that. I'm not going to condemn them to hell. That's not my job. Now, I may judge somebody and say, I don't want to be around that person. I don't like the way they act. I'll judge them that way. But I'm not saying, well, you're going to hell. Because, and, and I do have family members that will do that. But it's not because uh, they're extremists, because they're not. But they, they think certain religions are better than others. And to me, that's wrong. Uh, I mean, ah, people think Catholics are point. completely off base. Yep, I agree. Uh, I agree. There are a lot of people that don't consider Catholics uh, Christians. Same thing with uh, Mormons. Yep. Uh, I got a nephew who dates dated a Mormon. Uh, I don't. He's dating another woman now, but he dated a Mormon for a long time. Uh, I have nothing against it. Uh, it's that's between you and your belief. I'm not a Mormon. I would. I wouldn't follow the Mormon religion, uh, but that's my choice. If you, I, if I you actually, I'm not if Catholic, you actually, I, knew I would be a Catholic. Larry, 
If you actually knew the Mormon religion, you probably would follow it. No, uh, I wouldn't. Uh, They've changed the way they are so much. Uh, If you're talking about the old Latter-day Saints, the old Mormons, uh, they used to be, uh, I don't know if you ever read the book, uh, uh, what was it, A A Bride Too Many, One Bride Too Many or something like that, it was about Brigham Young. He had 27 wives. Yeah. Uh, I don't believe in that. I, I will well, never believe in that. And the only reason they got rid of the uh, polygamy is because the uh, government forced them to. Well, that's you the only way. You, that, that is the only rule, way. So no, I, that is that, the only way Utah could become a state. Yeah. But I'm just saying, no, I don't believe in that. Now, I know the uh, Muslims believe in four wives. I don't yep. believe in that. That's their that's their thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to tell you the truth. Uh, the fact. Lie to me. I'm going to lie to I'm going to lie to you because I think Dan Dan's a polygamist. Yeah. <laughs> he he would agree with it, but no. It, it, how do you truly keep more than one woman happy? Because you know, good well, she's they're going to be mad at you at certain times. Now, if you got two women. And you're trying to keep them both happy. One's always going to be mad at you because you're doing something for the one woman and not for her. Uh, I just, I I don't see how that is a equitable uh, relationship. Well, see, that Uh, was something, Larry, that's something that was your choice. You didn't have to do the polygamy. I know, but I'm just saying, no, I I don't believe in it. So if the church believes you you can do it, I don't believe in it. Well, Hey, how can I convince Minnie that I, I should be allowed to have more than one wife? That's a personal issue. <laughs> <laughs> Keep telling her, hey, we need I need another I you know, we should have another I should have another wife. Yeah. I can I can afford. Oh, she just she just pats me on the head. Oh, yeah. senile old man. <laughs> <laughs> Wishful thinking again. Uh, oh my goodness gracious! We're not talking about that again, are we? No, Brian, I'm avoiding you. Well, I happen to agree with Brian on this one. He says polygamy is not the way. And uh, well, you know what? I'll, I'll try it out, and I'll let you guys know. Well, no, yeah. no, like I said. <laughs> I, I'm not saying somebody else can't do it. I'm just saying it's not for me, and I don't want, oh. I don't want to do it. I don't want to sure, be Luke involved. says uh, I have to be crowned king first, and that that probably won't happen. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with you. Probably will not happen. I doubt it too. Yeah, uh, there's there are threads of truth to that. To that, I believe, Mike. There there are threads of truth to what yep. Ryan says. Um, also well, Mike, about the, Mike is about right. the exploitation that, that that takes place on occasion. Yep. Yeah. Can many have it? Hey, you know as well as I do, it's a male dominated world, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> well, what Mike's got to understand is remember, Mike, it's a white dominated world. <laughs> Mike, what you also got to understand is there's 2.7 women for every man. Yeah, but I'm going to tell you something else. Is there You're really? Trying, Where'd you get that yeah. number? Really? I, I, I've seen it several times fairly recently. Well, there probably is in some countries. Yeah, that's in basically China, I'd say no. Because for a long time, with China having the uh, one-child policy, yeah, a lot of women, when they if they found out they were having a girl, would either have an abortion or kill the baby afterwards because they want a son. Yeah. So they actually have a lower population of girls and women uh, than men. Uh, but like I said, that's not going to be the case in every country. No, but I, I do think it's more women are born on average than men. Um, Nick Ben is saying, Larry, you can have wives in different continents that way they can't fight with each other. Yeah, but the, that's but you could be uh, like, hey, you could be like, you could be like, what's his name? Overstay Road, Marco. 
Mark, Marcos. Live number one. Live yeah, number Marcos two. has Marcos has. Uh, well, he said Happy Mother's Day to all my baby mamas. Didn't he post some kind of video like that? Yeah, yeah. But there's there's only two. Well, that we know of. There's only two. Where his Thai wife and his Filipino wife? The wife in Thailand's Filipina. She is. That's the way. That's what I got from what he said. Wow. I might have misunderstood it, but I'll be darned. Uh, I just. I'm sorry. I. I, I oh, well, dating women. <laughs> I found it All right, hard to Brian. more than one woman happy. I think I'll Just drop dating. that subject. Well, alone here, <laughs> I mean, you know, because let's be honest about it. If they truly are in love with you, especially at the start, they don't want you being gone, uh, you know, not around very often. They want you around as much as possible. That's the start of a relationship. Uh, so if you're... I just find it tough to... See how you can keep two women happy and keep your sanity. Uh, I wouldn't even want to try. I, I would rather find have one happy wife than two half 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 the time pissed off wives. I the think the thing is, Larry, two half the time pissed off ones equals one wife. Yeah, but because if you have one gonna, happy wife, then you don't need to no, second she ain't one. going to be happy. She's going to be pissed off half the time. No, I don't think so. Not not, not if you do right. It don't matter. It oh, don't no, matter. No, no, don't get me wrong. I know she's going to be pissed once in a while. That's the nature that's, of that's women. A given. You're going to be pissed once in a while. That's a given in a relationship. Yep. Nobody gets their way 100%. No one's happy the entire time. But... If you got two and you walk out because the one's pissed at you, you go to the other one, uh, you go back to the second one, the first one, she's still going to be pissed at you because you walked out and went somewhere else. If you don't stay there and take care of the problem, uh, hey you're, guys, you're just creating it. here's our winner for the 100 pesos. Uh, who's that? Janzel. All right. Um, I don't know if I have your G cash. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to find a way to get it to me. I don't know if you're using your primary account or your Ninja hey, account because I don't. I don't. I haven't been paying attention. So just send a little um, message to me. You can find me on Facebook Messenger, Daniel Herrera, Sacramento, California, or if someone in here knows you in the stream, which I'm sure everybody does, they can send me your G cash number. And I will forward this hundred pesos to you. So you are today's one hundred peso winner. Yay! And we got Abby Garbon come in. Abby's here. Hi, Abby. Hey, Abby. How are you? So, how's life in the big city, Abby? How's how's things going today? Did you you finish? Did you polish off all those Dunkin' Donuts? Where is Abby? I'm looking for. Her. She's towards the bottom there. Uh, oh, okay. There's there's a delay on my end uh, on the on the computer. Where so. Mike is talking about who wrote the Bible, she's right above that. She sells hello to everyone. Ah, I see her now. And she also said hello to me right below Many Snows, uh, Purple Heart. Actually, yeah, I was between Many Snows, two Purple Hearts. Because I said okay. hi to her first. <laughs> All right. Hello. Hello, Abby. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, I'll tell you what, I've had a blast on this live stream today. I don't know about you guys. I missed the I missed uh I missed the Mac Daddy though. Yeah. Yep. As far as you guys know, did we say anything oh, to piss I, him off? Oh, by the oh. way, Dan, Anna May says, uh, Sir Dan, uh however you pronounce the name, is my son's account. It's her son. 
Oh, Anna May, son. Anna May, you got me again. <laughs> you were so you were so Take lucky. Care, Brian. <laughs> you were so lucky, Anna May. I didn't know. Okay, so I'll send that off. And uh, wow, wow, wow! I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited today. But uh, I think that I'm burnt too because I have a lot of stuff to do because we're packing. We're packing up. I have to pack up the studio and take it to Cebu. We still don't uh, have, know if Pretty Chismas uh, is their own account or if it's a, uh, a, a ninja account. Have you heard? No, no. no. Who is that? That's what I, that's what I brought I it up. Know. I know you asked and we never did mm. hear. So Pretty, oh, I'll find out. It? I'll find out. Know. Yeah. So uh, I'll send that off. I'll send that off to your uh, just a your Gcash um, anime. And now I got I got the whole family, right? I got you. I got your partner, and now I got your your son. So, and we have the big contest coming up on May thirty first. We got the big spin that Bakil Mertz is is uh, helping me out with. And so I'm not sure now that we know that we can simulcast. On StreamYard or um, uh, actually, I could simulcast. We could simulcast. We can do this. We can put this together anywhere. But I'm going to be in Cebu. Um, we're going to be in Cebu on the 31st. Uh, Pacquiao Mertz. So I'm wondering maybe we can we can do this live in studio, or maybe <laughs> we can figure well, something out to, I'm, to I'm do sorry, the I'm big spin. Anna May says. That's my chubby son, Dan. <laughs> oh, re oh, really? He takes up after us. <laughs> oh. Do you have a skinny one, too, Anime? We're like brothers, right? <laughs> That's great. So, uh, anyway, I'll begin with you, Pacquiao Merch, when we do the big spin, which is going to happen. That's Pesos 5K in the month of May. You still, have, you still have a chance to win. We still have plenty of live streams to go before Wednesday, the 31st at 8 a.m. And uh, I'll probably make y'all hang around until the very last 15 minutes. And then, oh, yeah, you got to do that. You got to Yeah, that. and then <laughs> we'll have Pacquiao Mertz set it all up. And then we'll we'll show it right here as the thing is spinning around. We'll put it, we'll put the timer. Mind. Yeah, we'll put it on a 30-minute on a, on a timer. <laughs> that would just be plain evil, wouldn't it? <laughs> That like one, which is right up your alley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had so much fun, guys! Thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thanks Thank everybody so who's for doing this. <laughs> Thank. We'll have to get together, Mertz, and we'll have to we'll have to have pancakes or something the, the morning of. Sorry. Well, anyway, <laughs> sorry, Leonard, but pancakes oh. are sound good. <laughs> yeah, they uh, I mean, I they do. But like I said, we'll I, make sure. We'll, we'll, do the, uh, we'll do keto cake. We'll do keto cakes, Dan. Leonard. Yeah. We'll switch over to keto I cakes. Can sure, Stan, some uh, sourdough pancakes. Oh, you know, I like sourdough. How about sourdough uh, uh, French toast? That would be ah. okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, that would be even yeah. better. And, and, you know, the thing is, sourdough is actually less bad than regular uh, pancakes or bread or whatever oh i'm it's sure it good. is yeah i read that somewhere it's yeah good, but it's less bad yeah it's I'm, I'm so we'll, we'll, we'll uh, still Dr. Dr. Ken Ken we're <laughs> really going to be manifesting weight loss by uh and you guys help me out by thinking good thoughts and i want you to will the fat right off of me will the fat right off of me Dan, manifest all it do, all you gotta do is eat right like i keep ah. doing Oh, I see. You're, Mike said the same thing. All you have to do is, is eat right, stop shoveling Jolly Bee down your gullet, and everything will be fine. <laughs> so, Larry, take take us out of this live stream, brother. All right, everyone. As always, be nice to each other. Take care of yourselves. Behave. If you can, as always, try to have fun. Be careful, man. Bye. Bye bye. And bye. I look forward to those cat pictures on Knit Band's Facebook page. See everybody later. Bye. Right. I'm out. Bye, everybody. <laughs>